So, <clears throat> in your view, should schools reopen to nursery age children and some primary age children from June the 1st? Yes, they should. And um, other countries are opening up their schools uh, in Europe and beyond, and, and so should we. Uh, the critical thing is, is, will parents feel and families feel confident to send their children into school safely? That's the big issue. It's all right opening up schools. But if parents lack that confidence, then they're not going to send them in. They must be naturally very apprehensive and uh, worried and nervous uh, about doing that. And it seems to me that the government have got a real part to play here in making sure that parents have the evidence. The evidence came out on, on Friday. I don't know why it came out on Friday, because we knew what the conclusions were of the, of the SAGE community well before that. So the government should have had two or three months to really prepare parents for the opening on the 1st of June. And I assume, I mean, I don't know, I'm out of touch with this now with what's happening on the ground, but I assume all parents have received a letter outlining what the evidence is so that they can make a right and balanced judgment. Um, it's interesting to hear, though, about uh, parents being persuaded uh, that it should be safe to go back, because teachers, many teachers, it seems, need a bit of persuading as well. Uh, the unions uh, digging in their heels, uh, some want many saying that they're not convinced it's safe to reopen schools. And do you feel that actually maybe they have a point? We're talking about quite young children here. Many of them, it would be almost impossible to enact social distancing with. Yes, you know, uh, social distancing uh, little five-year-olds is going to be like herding cats, as I heard somebody say. It's going to be really, really difficult. But other schools are doing it, uh, uh, um, not very far uh, in, in other countries abroad. So we, sh we should do th the same. It's really important that the government uh, get the confidence of parents and, and teachers. And, you know, um, they should lay down very clear guidelines and rules for, under which schools should operate. It's no good saying we're going to let, allow schools to do what they want, because some schools will do it extremely well, uh, and other schools won't. Some schools will ensure tri a triaging system is, is in place, that there's temperature testing, and that classrooms are intensively cleaned, and so on and so forth. Other schools might not be doing that, so it's really important that the government is very prescriptive in, on what it expects schools to do. And remember this, Local authorities, they've been marginalised in recent years, but they still have a responsibility for safeguarding. Even in academies and free schools, they have that responsibility. And the government should be calling all the local authorities together now and saying, look, you've got to make sure that every school in your area, no matter what its governance arrangements and its status, are, uh, are providing a safe environment for children. Do you think that the government should also be prescriptive in effectively forcing schools to open if they're unwilling to? Well, they can do what they like. They can bring in legislation and force schools. But unless head teachers feel that their schools are safe, and unless parents feel that their uh, uh, schools are safe and, and teachers the same, then it's, it's a pointless exercise. And that is why the government really, I think, should have spent the last three months preparing the ground, ground well, holding meetings with uh, the teacher associations, parent, parents associations and so on, to make sure that all the facts are there. Transparency is absolutely critical. And parents who don't necessarily read all the evidence from the research bodies need something to go on to make that balanced judgment. And I'm not sure they received that. Whatever uh, happens, there's going to be some real challenges with pupils being off school uh, as long as they have been already. Um, do you think we should think about things like cancelling summer holidays? Will some pupils be forced to reset the whole year? I've lost you. Oh, hopefully you can hear me now. I <laughs> hope you'll be able to hear me now. Ex um, do you think summer holidays should be cancelled and will some pupils have to reset years? Well, I've suggested that might have to happen with some year groups who are taking uh, uh, examinations. Can you hear me, by the way? You can. I can hear you, yes. I've suggested that might be something that uh, is considered with, with year groups who are about to take examinations, year 10 groups in secondary school, year 12 group, year, year 5 in, in primary school. We'll wait and see. What is, what is absolutely clear is that a lot of youngsters have lost a considerable amount of time while this lockdown has taken place. We've had the reports from the Institute of Fiscal Studies and from the Sutton Trust, which showed that the poorest children particularly have, have regressed. 
and have really lost out on their education. And that's a great shame because we want every year group to have the same chances as others. If I was a parent of a year to 10 youngster, for example, I want that youngster to have the same opportunities as every other year group that has gone through the system. And it's really the responsibility of schools and head teachers when this thing is over and lockdown ceases and they get the full school cohort in, to, they've got to really ensure recovery programs are put into place. That might mean uh, working in the holiday periods. It might mean uh, weekend work with, with examination students. I'm sure head teachers will be thinking about that now. I mean, it's a real concern, isn't it? The progress that we've seen in, in recent years being wiped out when it comes to pupils from I disadvantaged think... backgrounds. Do you think we could be talking about almost a lost generation? Yes, a, a lost generation of, of, of young, youngsters. And it is a great tragedy because our education system in England has made huge progress over the last few years. And the PISA results, which were published last year, show that. Uh, and it's, it's a great shame that this could uh, unravel that, that, that progress. I'm sure it won't if head teachers, when, they, when schools do go, right, are absolutely committed to recovering to lost ground. And that means convincing teachers to work the extra hours, coming at weekends and holiday periods, to really uh, intensify the work that, that, uh, that they do with youngsters, in, particularly in examination year groups. Just finally, you uh, said earlier that schools will be doing different things when it comes to social distancing. And I think certainly it feels as if schools have been doing different things when it comes to teaching pupils uh, online during the lockdown. Ofsted haven't been uh, appraising schools on how they've been performing during the lockdown. Do you think they should be? Yes, uh, simply that, yes, they, they should, because uh, Her Majesty's inspectors uh, are not inspecting at the moment. I don't know when inspection will resume, but uh, inspectors should be uh, uh, surveying the country to see what is happening, particularly in disadvantaged communities, to see whether youngsters have got laptops, for example. Are schools struggling? I know some schools that I'm in touch with are struggling to buy laptops for children in, in uh, necessitous circumstances. So Austin should be doing this survey and informing government what the position is on the ground so that government can take the necessary action.